So what is going on everyone, this is Fabi here and today we are going to take a look at the sort of apps that I use on my phone nowadays. Now I used to do these sort of videos a lot back in the day, and I mean back in 2015 or 2016, but I haven't done one since then and I think it's pretty interesting to see what sort of apps I use nowadays and I can showcase some of the apps I find interesting to you guys. So. Let's head straight into the video. Now on the first page there's not going to be a lot of apps that you guys won't know about, but there's a few that I want to showcase and the first one is going to be Spendy. Now this app allows you to track your expenses and track your budget, see where your income comes from, what sort of percentage you spend on food every month, on groceries and all sorts of things. And you can sort of see what habits you have and you can try to correct them perhaps if you feel like you're spending too frivolously on something. Or you can just see where your money goes basically each and every month and it's helped me a lot. I like inputting the stuff manually but you can also link to your bank account which makes it much simpler but I just like knowing that whenever I buy something or whenever I get some income I'm going to put it in this app and it's always organized over there and if I don't know where I spent I don't know $200 last week I can see right in this app. Next up we're going to talk about flight radar. This is really interesting for those of us that like flights. Now of course during the last few months because of the pandemic it's been a lot less busy than usual but you can see all of the flights around the globe that are tracked by them and that's most of them you can check all sorts of information it's really cool and for geeks like me for flight enthusiasts it's really something interesting to look at and whenever i'm bored i just tend to look around and see what sort of routes are flying around me so it's pretty cool i do like it now I don't know if you guys know but I'm pretty enthusiastic about Reddit so my main Reddit app is actually Apollo which comes with a lot of cool stuff, complete dark mode which is great for the iPhones which have OLED displays, you can create your favorite uh, sort of subreddits which show up at the top, you can do all sorts of things, you can have compact post size so that's something that I like. I know that the default app has those big posts and you can see only two or three posts on one page which is something that I don't like with Apollo it's really customizable and if you buy the pro version you have much more features but that's something that I didn't do you know the the free version is really just enough for me now on the second page is where things start to get a little bit more interesting nano is basically the reddit app that I use on my smartwatch so that's really just when I am on the go when I don't feel like pulling out my phone I used to use it a lot more when I got my Apple Watch at first, but now it's just sitting there and from time to time I do entertain myself with it, but I don't use it that much to be honest anymore. Some of you might wonder why I have the Airport Utility app, and it's not because I have one of those Airport Extreme routers, it's because you can actually turn on a setting in, in settings and you can basically scan for all of the networks in your area, and it's much more detailed than the sort of view you get in settings. If you look here, you have the Wi-Fi scan button and you can start scanning and you can see all of the networks that are in your area so for example you can tap on one and you can see the channel you can see the sort of signal strength you get from each Wi-Fi network which is really useful if you're trying to find out what channel you want to use for your router going on we have the network app this shows you again information about your network your Wi-Fi network how much data you have spent on LTE and stuff like that pretty cool for me someone that likes to know about their networks next up we have OpenVPN and Terminus now I use these two apps to connect to my Raspberry Pi remotely so when I'm not at home uh, the nice thing with OpenVPN is the fact that I can also turn it on from settings so I have my VPN toggle here I connected you can see the VPN logo up top and with Terminus I can type in any sort of uh, Linux command into the terminal on the Raspberry Pi or any other Linux computer or Mac OS basically that has the SSH functionality turned on the secure shell so it's really cool and it's really nice that I can control my Raspberry Pi from wherever I go. In the food folder there's all sorts of delivery food delivery services that are active in my area and also the McDonald's app it's just what I use to order food, especially now that during the pandemic all of the restaurants are closed for dining. I already told you that I like flying, so it's pretty obvious that I have a travel folder on my phone, but the two main apps that I want to focus on here are App in the Air and Kiwi.com. With App in the Air you can check all of your future flights, all of your current or all of your past flights. For some reason, oh, of course, there's no upcoming flights, but I can see all of my previous flights and I can also add some new flights for the future if I know that I'm gonna be traveling somewhere and I already booked my flight. Another cool thing is that it can link with some apps and with Calendar, for example, and you can see if you just purchased flights. So 
I know it works with Ryanair. Whenever I book a flight with Ryanair, it just automatically shows up here, which is pretty cool. But now, of course, with the pandemic, there's no flights that I got uh, booked for the future. The next app that I want to talk about is Kiwi.com. If you don't care about long or crazy sort of connections, you can check with Kiwi for your next trip and see if there's not a cheaper alternative to what you were previously planning. So let's say I want to go to Paris. I want to go from the 21st till the, let's say, 31st of July and we can see what sort of options it gives us. So you can see, for example, it's the cheapest to go with Wizz Air Direct and to return with Wizz Air from Paris to Budapest and from there to return via Flixbus. Sometimes it can be a little bit inconvenient, so you can see here 11 hours, but it saves you money and if you don't care about being there the fastest or returning uh, as quickly as possible, it's a pretty cool way to save some money. You can also, for example, say that you only want to travel by plane and it remembers your decision. So now it tells me that the cheapest way to get there is to fly direct with Wizz Air and return with uh, Tarom through Bucharest. Going on, we have the shopping folder, but I don't think that there's anything interesting here, so we are going to jump over it. And then the workout folder. Now, the seven minute workout app that I have is one of the basic ones on the App Store. I like the fact that it integrates with the Apple Watch so I can start workouts from my Apple Watch, but it's really just a generic one. It's got nothing that interesting. The workout app is pretty cool because it allows me to work out in the same sort of way that I would work out with a seven minute app, but it has six, 12, 18, and even 13 minute routines, which is pretty cool. So I do like that. Then we have the only two games that I have on my phone, which are GTA San Andreas and GTA Vice City. I do wish Rockstar would develop some more, but it doesn't seem likely at this point. Then we have some finance apps. We have my Yahoo Mail client. We have Google Sheets and some other uninteresting apps. But the one that I'm going to also showcase on this page is Secret Flying, which is basically sending you notifications whenever it finds really cheap error fare or something like that. So using this app, I managed to get notifications for 99 cents flights around Europe up and for uh, 120 to 130 dollars US return flights. So transatlantic return flights, 130 dollars. That is really incredible. On my last page, we have a few interesting apps. I do like to track my fuel consumption on my car, so I do have Fuelly. Some of you may know about this application. You can basically track all of your expenses with your car. You can input all of your fuel ups. You can input where you fueled up. It tells you what sort of gas mileage you got since your last fuel up. And I like to see how my fuel economy evolves over time. Push Bullet I use for some programs I have coded to push notifications to my cell phone. I find it cheaper than using an API. And also I think for the API, you need to have a paid developer account with Apple, which I don't currently have. Another cool app with the eSIM enabled iPhones here is Air Allo. So with Air Allo, you can purchase plans for most of the countries around the world. And uh, most of the time it's pretty affordable. You can sometimes find cheaper ways to get data when you're there through a local sim but for example for the US three dollars for a gigabyte is pretty good for US prices and it's what I used when I was in the US earlier this year and I have absolutely no complaints as far as I can remember it used T-Mobile and Verizon so you're covered having coverage from two carriers is is really awesome those of you that are PC gamers will know that Steam has offered in-house streaming and even remote streaming for your games but I really want to show you how awesome it is to just play some games. So I'm going to have to turn on the input because I have it disabled most of the time because I use with the controller connected directly to my computer. But I do like to stay in bed and play games with this method. And if you're connected to a five gigahertz network, it works really great. It has no issues. There's no latency and stuff like that. And my computer, my laptop is not that powerful. This is on a Windows laptop, but it works also with Macs. So if you have a Mac that has Steam and you have some games on Steam, you can of course use this to play. So I can start playing uh, GTA 5 from here, but I'm not going to start it now during the video recording because it takes an awful lot of time to load it up. It's the game that has the longest loading time of all of the games that I've ever played, which is really awful, but I do like playing the game, so there's not much what I can do about it. But you can see from the cursor and the sort of movements that I do here through the Steam big picture menu that it's really fluid and it works just fine if you have a decent router and 
if you have a 5 GHz connection to your router. Last but not least, I want to talk about Skillshare. The reason why I talk about Skillshare is that I actually want to start making some classes on Skillshare. And the first one that I wanted to start making is one about iOS shortcuts. A lot of people know about shortcuts and know that you can do some automations with shortcuts, but most of the people don't know that you can actually integrate code Python code and all sorts of other languages with shortcuts and it really allows you to do a lot of powerful things and that's the sort of thing that I want to focus in my class. If you guys are interested in seeing something like that please tell me in the comment section down below or if you think that there's anything else programming wise or iPhone wise that you would like to see on Skillshare that there's not a course on right now please tell me and I will do my best to consider it and perhaps even make a class in the near future. So anyways guys, thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you noticed that the video quality of this video has improved a little bit. I'm actually trying to get back on track and post some more videos for you guys. It's not gonna be daily videos or anything crazy like that, but I'm trying to post every week or every two weeks at a max. I really want to get back into videos because I miss filming and I miss talking to you guys and just being engaged with the community. It's really something that I want to get back so I'm trying to focus on this stuff a little bit more in the near future. But anyways guys, thank you for watching. Make sure to like this video, share it with your friends and subscribe and hit the bell icon if you want to see more of these sort of videos. Thank you guys for watching, stay tuned and stay awesome. Peace.